Hello, and welcome to Geo's add-on tutorials. We're working with the Pipple 4 add-on, and this is Module 2, titled Handling Some Initial Confusion or Starting Out. So, what you're looking at right now is the way that Pitbull looks when you first enter the game after installing it, without really having done much else except maybe perhaps what we did in Module 1, which is removing some of the add-ons from the list that you don't necessarily need. And this may not look too confusing right this second, but hopefully I'll be able to show you what some of this stuff is and uh, familiarize you with the interface and get you started on some of the configuration in this in this module. So let's get started. So why is this confusing? So first thing is, by default, when you first install Pitbull, all the unit frames are all in the very center of the screen and unlocked for moving around. So initially, when you drag one of these, you'll notice that it does move around. And all I have right now on the screen is the player frame. However, as soon as I target something, like say, for example, myself with F1 key, now I have several more unit frames, all of which look identical. So this is a little bit confusing. I've had any number of people tell me that they quit right here because they didn't know what the heck was going on or how to fix it or how to go any further from here. So hopefully I'll be able to clear some of that up. First thing you want to do is get into the configuration interface. Depending on what else you have installed, you may have a Pitbull icon up here on your minimap, which I do not. Or, otherwise, you can just type slash pitbull. They've also abbreviated that to slash pit or slash pb, any of which will work. And that brings up this screen right here. So, let's take a look and see if we can't eliminate some of these initial confusion points and make this a little easier on you. So, let's take a look at the interface here. And see what we've got all available to us. First thing up here is a config mode. We're going to make extensive use of this later on, especially when we get to configuring party and raid frames. For the moment, I'm going to just set this to solo, just so you can see what it does. Essentially, it enables every possible aspect of the unit frames to be turned on so that you can see how they will be positioned when you're actually working with the unit frames. Now, it's important to note that by default, your unit frames are not going to look very much like this because many of these icons and indicators that they have shown here will actually be off most of the time. For example, you have master looter and leader icons, role icons, quest icons, PvP icons, and so forth and so on. A lot of those will be off much of the time. This is more just for positioning and seeing how everything looks when it's kind of all together. The other thing to notice too, I'm going to move the Pitbull frame a little bit off screen here, is that it did enable several other frames here. Focus, you can see them labeled here, focus, player's pet, focus target, player's pet's target, focuses target's target, etc, etc, etc. This also, when you first start out, can be very confusing just because there's so many frames to look at and one of the things we're going to take care of right away here is turning those off so that we have a little cleaner interface and we can work with less at a time. So let me turn off the config mode here just so all that goes away. But basically that allows you to have everything enabled so that you can see everything on the unit frames and get a better sense for how things are going to be positioned. We will be making extensive use of that later. Frame movement. Like I said, by default, everything is unlocked. You'll notice that there's two settings here, with and without snap. And I'm going to show you what that does. With snap, which is the default, when you're dragging a unit frame, when you get close to another one, it will snap to it, like it just did. And that's, I don't know, I find it to be somewhat of a hindrance, because typically I do not have unit frames touching each other. But I guess for things like, say, I don't know, maybe party frames or whatever, where you do have things very close together, or you may in fact have them touching, that can be useful. But my preference is always 
to turn off snap and as I as I've just done and then when you drag things around there's no snapping behavior at all you can drag things very close together without any need to have them adjust for you so you can position things very very exactly okay so for the moment I'm gonna leave that on as well and now let's start going through some of these settings here on the left I'm gonna go through them in reverse order actually just because we're gonna finish with the layout editor give you a sense for how all this stuff fits together so without further ado profiles profiles for those of you who are used to ace add-ons are going to be very familiar to you but what they are is essentially a way to create configurations and share those configurations between players in fact even between servers or even if you want have multiple configurations on a single character so this is where you will manage that when you install this at first under here under existing profiles the existing profile is the profile you currently have selected as you can see here you will probably have it set to default which is how it will be when you first install as you can see I have several other profiles here that are uh, available to me in addition to default I've created this one called fresh just to be, have a completely reset profile so that it will look exactly how it looks when you first install which is where we've begun this tutorial and I would leave it on default for now there's going to be another module later on where we discuss profiles in a lot more detail so I will leave that until then. But for now, that's how things will look. Colors. This allows you to, with quite a lot of granularity, configure the colors that various things in the interface will have. I would leave these alone for now. If at some point you find that your colors that are being used for the various aspects of the interface are not to your liking, or you have a very specific color scheme that your interface is going to use, you can adjust all of these but for now I would leave them alone and use the defaults and then when you actually get to the point where you're modifying individual colors of bars and, and, and so forth then you can adjust that here. Modules, this is going to look very familiar. This list is the same list that was out in the add-on list that we were looking at earlier and this allows you to enable or disable any of these modules in-game as well. The one thing to note is that if you have disabled a module like say for example in module 1 when we disabled Lua texts you will notice that the enable button in here is grayed out that's because the add-on is not loaded and cannot be loaded unless you actually enable it in the add-on list out of the character selection screen so one option if you choose to go down that road and ignore the selections we did in module 1 is to have the modules the various parts of Pitbull loaded or disabled or enabled in here instead of at the add-on selection screen. I prefer to do it at the add-on selection screen. It's completely up to you how you want to manage that. But this is where you can enable and disable those modules in-game. Groups. So groups is where you will be configuring party and raid frames. I'm not going to get into a lot of detail here yet just because this is actually a fairly this deserves its own module is what it boils down to. There's quite a bit that you can do in here, and uh, I'm not going to uh, waste a lot of time right now giving you any more detail on that, but this is where you will be configuring all the various types of party and raid frames that you can make. So let's leave this alone for now. As I said, there will be a module that focuses on this specifically, and we'll get into more detail on that later. Units. Okay, let's get rid of some of the initial confusion that we had right away here. This is a, what allows you to enable or disable the various types of unit frames. And just for now, let's disable all of the unit frames except the player. If you pull this drop down here, you can see all the various types. So focus, focus is target. Some of these you will never ever use. So targets, targets, target, for example, or focus is targets, target. I would say maybe 1% of people, if, if not even less actually have a need to have those units frames visible. Some of the others though, obviously player target, player's pet, player's pet's target, so forth and so on. Those are very more widely in use and so there's certainly a need to have those. Let's go through though this list and one at a time disable each. So select the unit frame here in the drop down and then click disable. 
or uncheck enable rather. And as we get a little further down here, so for example, when I hit target, by the way, let's leave the player frame enabled. So there's the player, make sure you leave him enabled. Target, when I uncheck this, you'll notice that one of the unit frames down here is going to disappear. There it goes. And as I continue, the others will disappear as well. So what we're left with is just, whoops, enable, there we go. So left, what you're left with is just the player frame. That'll allow us to focus specifically on this unit frame. And then we can start, once we're comfortable, we can start enabling the other, the other unit frames as well. Okay, so that's the good portion of the confusion right there, gone. And moving finally to the layout editor. This is where you're going to be doing 90% of the configuration in Pipple. So it's really important to kind of understand how this functions. You have first a, a layout selection screen. Right now there's only one there, normal. Normal is the one that is configured by default, and it is the one that is in use by all unit frames, which is why, if you remember just a moment ago, that all those other unit frames look exactly like the player frame because all of them are using the same layout. So what is a layout exactly? A layout is a setup of a unit frame for a particular look and feel. So the position of the bars, the, where the texts are, where the indicators appear, all that kind of stuff is determined in this layout. And later in the units frame, you can assign a layout to a particular unit frame. So initially you only have one, but in the longer term you'll have probably many of these configured. So for example, say one for your player, one for your target, maybe one for your pet, one for your focus target, one for party frames, one for raid frames, and so on. And each of those layouts can be assigned to individual unit frames. So let's take a little closer look at the layout configuration here, layout editor. There are two layers of bars. I'm going to call this top one here layer one bars, or layer one tabs. And then underneath there, as you can see as we kind of scroll through the layer ones, the ones underneath here, which I'll call layer two tabs, change based on which thing you're configuring. All right, so let's go through these. Layer one, general, is stuff that's specific to the layout as a whole. So the size, for example, the width, as you watch the unit frame down here as I adjust stuff, the width of the unit frame, the height of the unit frame, and the scale of the unit frame. So all those things can be adjusted. Strata, I'm not going to get into the strata right now. We'll talk about that in more detail later. It has to do with the mm, relative height of a unit frame in amongst all the other stuff that's in your interface. So don't worry about it for right now. And then, of course, the ability to delete a layout should you choose to, if you make a mistake or you create one accidentally or what have you. It is not possible to delete the normal frame, so don't try. Okay, moving on. Layer one tabs again, this one is bars. So now we're into the various bars you can configure. Power bar, health bar, cast bar. Those are most typical ones that you're going to see. Blank space can be configured. You can enable blank space, for example, in between other bars and so forth. We'll get into more detail on that later. And then general configuration about all of the bars. So, for example, what texture is used. What spacing do you have between bars, and what padding do you have around bars? Spacing and padding we'll get into in more detail later as well. Indicators. So let's change the config mode back to solo here so you can see how the indicators look. Okay, so indicators are all the various icons that appear around the unit frame. And again, just for a little bit of confusion uh, limit, limiting here, why don't we go through and for each of these indicators, we're going to disable them all. So you select the layer 2 tab, combat icon for example, which is right here. Disable it, you should see it pop away. There it goes. Combo points, combo points don't appear here because it's a player frame, but nevertheless, disable it. Leader icon, disable. Master leader, disable. Portraits are not enabled by default. This is what a portrait looks like. You can see the face of your of your tune there. Disable that. PvP icon, disable. 
Quest icon, disable. Raid targets. Ready check. Rest icon. And roll icon. Okay, so now we have a clean unit frame without any indicators on it at all. The various texts. This is where the various texts that appear on the unit frame are. For example, the name, class, which is down here, uh, health and mana, and so forth. We're going to leave those enabled for now. Faders. This is something we talked about a little bit in Module 1. Uh, right now, I think the only fader I have, yeah, is the range fader. The faders are allow you to have unit frames fade out, either partially or completely, based on particular uh, events in game. So, for example, if in this case, in the range fader, if a unit, which is to say one of your party members or something, goes out of the range of your casting, you can have that unit frame fade out partially or completely. In combat, out of combat, hostility versus friendly. So if someone is a hostile versus a, a friendly target, you can have it fade out, so forth and so on. Right now, the only one I have enabled is the range fader. Auras are the these icons you see along the bottom row here, which are your sample buffs and debuffs. If I uncheck those, You'll see them go away. I am going to uncheck them for now. Again, just to remove some of the confusion. And we'll get into configuring auras later. But this is probably one of the more complex parts of configuring Pitbull. And I will dedicate a module to this later on. And finally, other, which is anything else of the modules that doesn't necessarily fit into one of these main top-level categories. So in this case, it's things like the background and the border, cast bar latency, visual heal. And this is where you can configure those things. So that is the interface for Pitbull configuration in a nutshell. I'm going to get into more detail on each of these pieces in other modules, and hopefully you'll stick around and watch the other ones so you can get into more detailed configuration. But hopefully after the, at this point you have a little bit cleaner of an interface. You know where the various parts of the Pitbull configuration are, and maybe even have started working with your, with your layout a bit. Moving on to Module 3, hope to see you there. Thanks.